All right. This is my last solo Sigma made simple tip for this month. I'm going to talk about input tables in this video and, and hopefully how to make them simple and how to use them in general. So a input table is a way to actually interact and record and potentially update your data in real time. And in this example, I have basically an update of my sales data by product and brand. And there's my total sales. And I want to basically throw out a scenario in here. And my scenario is that I have my smartphones line of business. And I actually just found out that one of my providers, Samsung, specifically Samsung with Verizon, I'm no longer going to be able to do business with. I've lost a contract or going exclusive rights with a, a, a someone else. And so I need to do real-time forecasting and update uh, my line of thinking around this. I want to just examine the smartphone's data closer in here. And the way I'm going to do that is that I'm going to create an, an input table and I'm going to do scenario planning in real time. And I would do that by clicking on this create child element and then create a link input table. And I, I, can, I can do that real quick. Uh, by the way, I would just select row index. It's my uh, most detailed part here. And then I would bring all these data in, but I've actually created this table. So that's all I did to create this input table. From there, uh, what that's going to do is create this new linked input table, and it even says it's editable. I've added one column in here. This column, if you notice, by the way, when I add them, I can only add columns. I can't create calculations. So I can basically make adjustments. And we're going to do a percent adjustment. What I just said was Samsung and Verizon. I had $76 billion in sales. I'm losing all of that next year. So I'll just type in 0, 0.0 in here. And now I can take this value and actually update and do a scenario plan with it. And while I would love to be able to link it to my original table, that is not possible. You can't link a table back to itself. You need to create a new element. So I'll just take this exact same table and duplicate it. And we can, again, pretend that I've done that. I've done it for the sake of this example. And it's just right here. So here's my updated table. I'm going to remove a few fields here. I just noticed I left in here. So I have that percent adjusted calculation that I want to bring in. So I want to take this percent adjusted calculation and bring it into this table. And the way I can do that is I can just create a new column via a lookup. So I just need to select my source, in this case, it is my input tables and my updated, sorry, my new linked input table. And I'm going to then map my elements on row index. And I'm going to also just, even though it's a little, maybe a little redundant, I'm just going to map it on every single field type. So I've got family, product line, and also I'm going to bring in brand here. I'm bringing in all my values. And maybe I'll just remove row index to show that hopefully this will work. And the column I'm going to add, by the way, is that percent adjusted. And you'll notice that it's only 5.8%. That's because I've only have that one field in there. So that's looking. Let's just change. We'll change the name in a second here. Let's just hit done. And you'll see now there's that percent adjusted field coming through as a linked data. So now. I want to update my sales and add a column for adjusted sales in here. And to add that adjusted sales, I'm just going to build a calculation here. So I'm going to enter a formula. Let's just say if, so let's select here and say, so if our percent adjusted calculation is null. So if it's null, we actually just want to return the same value same or basically a hundred percent out of it. So we'll say percent adjusted. Then we want, whoops, is null. So if it is null, let's return a one. Otherwise we want to return percent adjusted. And then we're going to multiply that by our sales. So 
let's just take this value and multiply it by that value. But if this is no, we'll make it a one so we can actually see our sales in real time. So there's our new adjusted sales in real time. Now we can run this up against it and build a bar chart, which I've actually done already. I've taken that product family, which is smartphones, and I've just filtered it straight to smartphones. And I've added the sales, the original sales here and the adjusted sales. And, and I can see those values showing up. So if I did want to add labels in here really quick, I could potentially add some data labels that allow me to see these values. But I could now bring this up over here. I'll do a little side by side with this. Boop. I got to have the sound effects. But here's my input table. And great. Now I have a way to compare. Good news, though is that even though we lost this contract, our finance team has come through or we're actually planning this ourselves and we think we're gonna get 120% inc or just a 20% increase in sales from AT&T, Samsung and another 120 there. And actually we think our Apple and Verizon sales are gonna be up 5%. In fact, even our Motorola, we're gonna expect 3%. So all of a sudden, as you notice, we can, take our original values, it stays the same, and you can see the updated scenarios being played out in real time as I update the values in my chart to say, great, what are our sales gonna be? And maybe we actually found out like we're, the contract doesn't end for a little bit, so we're gonna continue to get some sales, maybe like 12% out of, but the overall story here is that uh, with linked input tables, you can actually interact with your data in real time via a link, that linked input table and then connecting it back to the actual data set itself. And the, the just the sort of the last thing I want to call out is actually to take a look at the lineage here. So our lineage actually starts, I've got a couple of different examples in here, but you'll see the source data, that's where we originally started with. I built a table on that, the table that we saw that was a summarized data set. Uh, I, I showed a bar chart that showed all the different product family detail. I created an input table, and then uh, I used that lookup to join to an updated new table because I can't write it back to the original, original. And then I had my bar chart that compared the current versus the new forecasted value. Anyway, that is how to work with input tables and how I constantly think what a revolutionary way to work with data and interact with it and really understand what's going on in, in your actual data. Anyway, that is my final tip for the month for Sigma Made Simple, but just wait, we've got one special one for the end of the month. I think you'll see me in here in just a little bit. Anyway, that's the video. Thanks a lot.